what is good neo family it's ray j back with another video and in this one i'm going to be talking about the one only neo stock what you should be looking out for the future why tomorrow is going to be an absolutely massive day for the markets and how this may affect neo share price because we have the big fomc meeting i'm going to break down what you need to know and why this is going to be so huge and before i break anything down before i get into any more details i got to mention a couple of things real quick firstly i'm not a financial planner so don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this not only benefits me it benefits the entire new community as a whole and the last thing is if you guys can please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description if you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks each worth up to two thousand dollars the best part is any of these 12 free stocks could be a free neo share a free test to share or a mix of all of them it's a limited time offer the offer ends in just one week check it out before they run out with that sort of the way Let's get on with the video. Looking at NEO, this thing is currently in the green. We're very close to the market close, and overall, we are seeing some relative strength for NEO and Tesla and many EVs out there. However, where we go for the future is going to be heavily dependent on the FOMC meeting, so it is going to affect NEO as well, as NEO does tend to move with the markets. But at the same time, from a technical standpoint, NEO is showing some strength, so I do believe this is going to end up turning out in our favor. So let me give you guys a quick back background on cpi and inflation and how this is going to affect the fed's decisions looking at the latest cpi report obviously core cpi was going up and the only reason why the report was showing some downside is because of the fact that gas prices temporarily came down but overall besides gas everything was just going up in value pce also came out it rose another 0.5 percent in september as expected and this was not the best for the markets because when inflation is high it incentivizes the fed to be even more hawkish and in turn this is likely going to cause demand and earnings to be affected heavily in the markets and for our economy now looking at the federal funds right we could see right here it's going up over and over again and we are seeing just climbing and climbing and climbing this in turn is going to continue to climb over the next few months and that's the reason why the markets are starting to price in a 75 basis point rate hike at the time of recording this we're about 87.5 percent of the way there to price in or fully price in a 75 basis point hike and that's a good sign for the markets and I want to talk about something else that's important. And that's the exact time of this big meeting. So what's going on with this meeting? All right. Why is this important? So at two o'clock PM Eastern time, remember this time, guys, this is when Jerome Powell is going to be speaking. This is important because even though the markets know and we're basically prepared for 75 basis points for November, we almost fully priced it in. I want to note something that's important. That is, that is not the big thing that's going on. The question is, what's going to happen with future guidance? Is the Fed going to pivot? Are there going to be signs of it? My answer to that is we're not going to see a straight up pivot just yet. I don't see the Fed decreasing rates yet, but I do see them potentially getting ready to do so. It's very possible because if you think about it, when the Fed pivots, we need to see inflation start to come down. And when they pivot, they don't immediately go from like raising the federal funds rate by 75 basis points in November to suddenly just decreasing. What they're going to do is, in reality, they're going to raise it and continue to raise it, but the rate at which they raise it is going to decrease. This means that instead of giving us another 75 basis points again and again, they're going to give us a 50, then a 25, then they're going to keep it at zero. They're not going to raise rates anymore. They're going to keep it high for just I don't know, a couple of months or something, and then they start to decrease rates. That's how the pivot really functions. So we're not ready for a straight up pivot yet, but the preparation of it is very possible. And Powell is going to give us some very big announcements about it. He may say something about, you know, when they plan on doing it. He may say something about them being less hawkish in December. The guidance and the future policies are what, what are going to really affect the market on this one. This is what investors, entrepreneurs, people all over the world are watching for this at this moment. Now, when it comes to NEO stock, all right, now that I gave you guys some background information, currently, the volume is just pretty decent. It's not great, but it's not bad overall. 53 million compared to the 63 million average. But right now, at least if you look at this temporarily, we're seeing a slight decrease in the short volume percentage, which is actually showing us that the longs, the bulls are gaining the edge on this stock. So once again, a pretty decent sign. If you look at other metrics out there, we can see there is a correlation between NEO and the SPY. If you look at NEO compared to the QQQ, Look at this correlation. It's very, very high. You guys can see how similar these trends tend to be. And I want to note this because 
the QQQ, the NASDAQ, you know, tech stocks, EVs, they are affected by the economy. They are affected by the federal funds rate and the Fed, and that in turn will affect NEO. NEO has had a weak uh, price pairs ratio, but it, there are some signs of it starting to push up a little bit. And I do believe NEO has been like very oversold and we are getting ready for a nice push. Now, even Barclays Bank, like I mentioned, guys, they're bullish on NEO. And from a seasonality basis, on Wednesdays, we're about green about 56% of the time. But however, tomorrow is going to be a different day. I want to warn everyone about this. So for tomorrow, guys, I think NEO is going to temporarily come down. Just hear me out. The whole market is going to drop a bit because of the fact that Jerome Powell is going to be speaking. When he talks, the whole market is going to come down. Okay, be ready for that. Then what's going to happen is NEO could come down to this like 9.6, 9.5 range. Who knows? Maybe around like 9.5, I would estimate. And if NEO is down to this 9.5 to 9.4 range, what I'm going to say is NEO is going to kind of like hang out around here temporarily for tomorrow by the time we get to 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And then what's going to happen is the market's going to move based off what Powell says. So if Powell suddenly says something like, look, you know, inflation is still high, but the data is suggesting that it's going to start coming down. If he says something like that, like hypothetically, and he says something like, oh, we're getting ready to pivot soon. You know, the whole market could actually rally and Neo could start pushing up and turn green and make a big move to $10 or higher, then start an uptrend for the next week, right? That's very possible. But if Powell says something like, oh, we're nowhere near get uh, ready for the pivot, you know, we're going to have to be aggressive for a longer period of time, expect more pain, you know, it's going to be a hard landing. If he's like more centered on that, the market could come down and we could see Neo retest 9.28, maybe come a little lower than that, guys. So be ready for that. What do I think is most likely going to happen? In my opinion, and please do not invest based off this. Do not make any decisions solely based off what I'm saying. What I'm thinking is going to happen is Neo is going to do this. Neo is going to like come down with the markets. I think the market is going to trade sideways for a large percentage of tomorrow. And then when Powell gets ready to speak, let's just say Powell is speaking like right here, the market's going to drop and Neo is going to come down to this 9.4 to 9.5 range. I'm hoping it's around there. And then we're going to trade sideways and we're going to move based off what Powell says. And I think that what's more likely to happen instead of us just like crumbling down like this, I think we're going to get a nice bounce. And we're going to rally into close tomorrow and we're going to continue to rally for the next couple of days. That's my bias. I want to show you guys why I feel this way. And I think this could help Neo break above $10 for tomorrow. Right? This would be a more bullish possibility. But if things don't go as planned, after Powell is speaking, this is also possible. I want you guys to be prepared for this. If Powell is just very aggressive, Neo could come down like this and take a big hit. Now, like I mentioned, guys, I'm more inclined to thinking that we're going to see a move like this. We're going to come down when Powell is speaking, get a nice bounce. I think Powell is going to announce potentially a 50 basis point rate hike for December. He's going to talk about how the Fed is getting ready to kind of slow down a little bit. It's very possible that this could cause the market to rally. And I want to talk about why I feel this way. Because if we look at some previous trends on the SPY, okay, SPY actually held 384. I think SPY is going to retest 381 tomorrow, and it's going to cause NEO and the market to come down, or at least play a role in that happening. But I'm hoping for a big bounce, the mother of all bounces tomorrow and maybe for the later days of the week. I feel this way because from a more macro perspective, SPY has been respecting a broadening descending wedge. I've talked about this for quite a while. We broke above the midline area. I didn't really draw that out because it's going to be too messy, but I want to just keep it this way. When it comes to SPY, I'm hoping for a retest up here on this 410 zone, 410 to 412, if we could get a big rally. Midterms are also coming. The market tends to pump during them. And also, SPY has this big gap of here. SPY has not collapsed yet. We're still pretty green compared to the overall trend. And right here looks like a very keen accumulation phase right here. So institutions were accumulating lots of shares right here. They're letting this thing run. And if there is more room, it is possible for us to see a continuation. I'm thinking that what's most likely going to happen to SPY is, like I said, a pullback when Powell speaks. 381 to 380 could very likely be tested. And if we break below like 378 and we start hitting like 377, 375, it's not going to be good, guys. That's going to be dangerous. But it could be like a massive trap for people that are super like bearish. 
and we could get a huge reversal when people least expect it. And what I'm hoping for is we come down to this like 380 zone, 381, and get a big bounce after Powell's done talking and the market starts to pump. Because remember, 75 basis points is not going to affect us. We already priced that in, or over, we almost fully priced it in. On top of that, I really believe that Powell, I don't really think he's going to cause a huge crash just yet. I think that it's a little bit more likely for him to try to save us temporarily for the next like month or so, so that by the time like January comes, when real pain comes to earnings, that's when we can see more potential pain, more sideways action. So anyways, guys, that's my bias. Basically, just to recap everything real quick, I'm anticipating that the market's going to come down like this. All right? But I'm hoping for a very bullish move like this. I'm more biased into thinking that's going to happen instead of us coming tumbling down. I'm hoping for NEO to get a nice bounce and break above that $10 mark. That's basically what I have for this video. I'm more bullish than bearish. However, it really depends on what Powell says, but I gave you guys my prediction. So, you know, what, what happens, happens. Be ready. Get ready for tomorrow. It's a huge day for the markets. It will affect everyone, your lives, my lives, everyone in America and other countries. So remain calm, cool, and collected, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Neo to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.